Most bankers aren't ready to help you until after their third cup of coffee. But with Central National Bank's after-hours service, you don't have to wait for the bank lobby to open to get help. You can contact us from 6 to 8.30 in the morning or from 5 to 10 in the evening, and we'll connect you to a real, live, local person who can answer questions and fix problems seven days a week. Bank different. Bank central. Central National Bank. Member FDIC. This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Previously, on Jennifer Love Hewitt, please be on our show. This house is no longer safe. Come with me if you want to live. I am no seer. You will have to trust me. Chapter 5. Into the Darkness As Jennifer and Party Donkey huddled together in the safe house, their hearts pounding with fear and anticipation, they couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched. The tension in the air was palpable, a silent warning of the danger that lurked just beyond the walls of their makeshift sanctuary. Suddenly, the door burst open with a resounding crash, and Jennifer and Party Donkey leaped to their feet in alarm. Framed in the doorway stood their guide, Nosir, his face pale and drawn with fear. "'We have to go now,' Nosir exclaimed, his voice urgent. "'They've found us.' Jennifer's heart sank at the words, her mind racing with fear and uncertainty. How had they been discovered so quickly? And who were these mysterious assailants who seemed so determined to capture them? But there was no time for questions or hesitation. With a sense of urgency, Jennifer and Party Donkey followed Nosir out into the night, their footsteps echoing in the empty streets as they raced against the clock to reach safety. As they emerged onto the deserted street, they were met with a scene of chaos and confusion. Gunfire echoed in the distance, mingling with the shouts of men and the wailing of sirens. The once peaceful city of Tashkent had descended into madness, and Jennifer and Party Donkey were caught in the crossfire. With Nosir leading the way, they dodged through alleyways and side streets, their hearts pounding in their chests, as they raced against time to reach the dirt runway, where a UN airplane waited to whisk them away to safety. But as they neared their destination, their hopes were dashed by the sight of the plane disappearing into the night sky, its engines roaring as it soared away to freedom. Jennifer's heart sank at the sight, her mind reeling with despair. We missed it, Party Donkey said, his voice filled with disbelief. We missed our chance to escape. Jennifer felt a surge of panic rising within her, threatening to overwhelm her senses. They were stranded in a war-torn country, with no way out, and danger lurking around every corner. How were they supposed to survive in a place where death seemed to lurk at every turn? But as she looked into Party Donkey's eyes, she saw a flicker of determination that mirrored her own. They may have missed their chance this time, but they were not about to give up hope. They would find a way to escape this nightmare, no matter what it took. With renewed determination, Jennifer and Party Donkey set out into the darkness, their minds set on one goal, to survive. And as they disappeared into the night, their future uncertain and their fate hanging in the balance, they knew that their journey was far from over. Chapter 6. A Glimmer of Hope As Jennifer and Party Donkey made their way through the war-torn streets of Tashkent, they couldn't shake the feeling of despair that hung over them like a dark cloud. The chaos and violence seemed to follow them wherever they went, a constant reminder of the danger that lurked around every corner. But despite the odds stacked against them, Jennifer refused to give up hope. She knew that they had to keep moving, keep fighting, if they were ever going to escape this nightmare and find their way to safety. With Nosir leading the way, they navigated the maze-like streets of the city, their hearts pounding in their chests with every step. The sounds of gunfire and shouting echoed in the distance, a grim reminder of the violence that surrounded them on all sides. But as they neared the outskirts of the city, Jennifer's heart skipped a beat at the sight of a dim light flickering in the distance. Could it be? Was there still hope for escape, after all? With a renewed sense of determination, 
Jennifer and Party Donkey quickened their pace, their eyes fixed on the distant light like a beacon of hope in the darkness. And as they drew closer, they could see the outline of a small dirt runway, with a solitary figure standing by a waiting airplane. It's our chance, Jennifer said, her voice filled with excitement. We have to make a run for it. With Nosir leading the way, they sprinted across the open ground, their hearts pounding in their chests as they raced against time to reach the waiting airplane. They could hear the sound of gunfire growing louder behind them, but they refused to let fear hold them back. Finally, they reached the runway, their chests heaving with exertion as they stumbled towards the waiting airplane. The pilot, a UN officer, beckoned them aboard with a sense of urgency, his face drawn with concern. Hurry, there's no time to waste, he called out, his voice barely audible over the roar of the engines. With a sense of relief, Jennifer and Party Donkey climbed aboard the airplane, their hearts pounding with excitement as they settled into their seats. They were finally free, finally on their way to safety. But as the airplane taxied down the runway and lifted off into the night sky, Jennifer couldn't shake the feeling of unease that gnawed at her insides. They may have escaped Tashkent, but their journey was far from over. And as they disappeared into the darkness, their future uncertain and their fate hanging in the balance, Jennifer knew that their true test was only just beginning. As the explosions outside the airplane continued, and the plane shook violently in the air, Jennifer looked at Party Donkey and said, What the hell have you done? Party Donkey looked at Jennifer with a tear in his eye and simply said, I'm sorry. has been a Rogue Media Network 